Hi everyone, and I hope you're doing well. In my previous series of videos of how to mix a song using the Tascam Model 12, we finished off by mixing our song and into our main by making sure that we did not press any of the record buttons on the channel and by simply pressing the record button that played back all of our tracks and then we mixed it down to uh, tracks 11 and 12 which is our main bus and then once and of course you we could use automation as well by manually moving the faders to have a, a great mix of the song and then we were able to hear that by pressing the SD main button. Let's uh, try that right now. So let's have a listen to our mix very quickly. Okay, so that's 11 and 12 we listened to. And once we were happy with that, we could use the menu system and go to mix export stereo mix export and we could export that song into a stereo wave file where we can listen to on our pc laptop or, um, or upload it to youtube or um, you know any of the streaming platforms if you were happy with that and um, that's what we're going to do all right yes i'm going to try that again now in this video what i'm going to try to attempt is to master it again in quotes as I explained in my previous video because Tascam Model 12 doesn't really have a mastering option the only thing we have is our one knob compressor so we're going to use our one knob compressor and then the new feature found in the firmware version 1.40 and up normalize so let's give it a try now, to demonstrate that we are actually doing something and compare from our original mix and the stereo export and then afterwards when we apply our one knob compression and normalization and maybe a little bit of tweaking of the EQs, I will copy at each step of the way the stereo wave file onto my laptop and we're going to have a look at it and compare it and see how we actually glued the song together by using what I would call a bus compressor. And unfortunately, that's the only thing we have at the moment, plugged in the one knob compressor, and that's what we're going to use. So we'll find out and we'll experiment, and let's hope it makes our song a little bit more glued together and more tonal balanced as well as a little bit louder. I have done a video of the one knob compressor and how it works on the Tascam Model 12. If you haven't watched that video, I will leave a card there. You can watch it. Uh, I have analyzed it to a certain degree to give me some idea of uh, how this one knob compressor works. And to just to generalize at the moment is that at the beginning stages, it has high ratio, but also high uh, threshold. So you really have to be having a, a loud signal coming in and it will clamp it down with high ratio, like close to a limiter. And then as you move up uh, clockwise, the ratio drops as well as the threshold. So that means the lower signals will get less compression. So that's how it works. I don't know why. I guess that's how Tascam has uh, designed the one knob compressor usually having it anywhere between sort of uh, like 11 o'clock until 2 or 3 o'clock you know it's a it's a nice way to compress normal live signals now because in mastering we're going to need a limiter that means our uh, uh, one knob compressor needs to be about you know 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock or thereabouts and because at that level as I explained in my analysis video, you need a high signal because the threshold is high as well. So we're going to need a high signal feeding in so that we can limit it. This way, what we want to do is basically limit and chop off all of the high signals in the waveform 
so that we can reduce the dynamic range. Of course, we can play around. We can start by having it a little bit um, lower threshold and maybe lower ratio to glue the things together as a normal bus compressor. And maybe at second round, we can do a bit more limiting. Maybe we try that and see how we go. Okay. And to be able to do that, what I want to do is use the normalize function to get the tracks 11 and 12 at its maximum level. So to do that, let's go into menu and let's move to um, MTR, multi-track recorder, track edit, and we're going to go to normalize. And from normalize, I'm going to select tracks main okay 9 and 10 and main and level I might just do it 0 0.03 so I have minus 0 0.3 dB I want that to be maximum you probably go why so high because we want to push the compressor okay so 0 0.3 is good enough so I'm going to click yes and let it do its thing so what Normalize does is that it looks at all of the waveform and then finds the loudest peak and then gives it a gain to the highest that we selected, which is 0 0.3 dB. So increase the gain. And we could do the opposite as well. So if we have a high signal um, that we recorded too high and we want to bring it down, we can use the normalize and set the level to, let's say, minus 6 or minus 12 dB. This will bring the gain down. Now, it's very clever to actually use normalize rather than gain. So if you have low signal to add gain, if you have you know, high signal to reduce gain. But because this is a digital domain, and it's, once you clip it's destructive. That means it's clipped, digital clipping, and it's going to be horrible to listen to from then on. But because normalize will only go up to 0 dB, that means you will never distort or damage your recording. So it's clever for Tascam to sort of do normalize, and that's what I was um, hoping for they will do when I was uh, mentioning about giving you know gain control for the tracks. So doing normalize is a clever way of working it so that you can never go above um, 0 dB because if you had simply just gain and if you had a signal which had a peak of minus 1 dB and you gave it 2 dB of gain, you clipped it. But with normalize, that's a good thing. You will never clip it. Okay, so I thought I'll just explain that. So now that we've done that, let's go back out and let's have a listen to our main to see how loud it's going to be. And I haven't touched the um, level, so it might get a little bit loud. Let's give it a try. Definitely. Definitely, we now have louder signal. And it's going to peak at uh, 0.3 uh, dB. So now that we've got that, let's uh, uh, copy that into our 9 and 10. So I'm going to swap the track for this time, track edit, track swap, and I want to swap 11 and 12 to 9 and 10. That means whenever we play, we're going to start playing on 11 and uh, 9 and 10. That way we can re-record on 11 and 12 if we like to. Okay, so we've done that. So let's take it out of the main. And now we can listen to 9 and 10. Now let's start giving it a little bit of gentle compression. Long, 
Okay, so that's a nice level. I'm hitting the 0 dB on my main even when I have my main on 0 dB. And I can probably add a little bit more because that's about minus 12 dB peak that it's uh, doing. So I think that's uh, quite right. Okay, sorry about that getting a little bit uh, louder. I might turn the volume down uh, on my capture card so we don't uh, get too loud for you. And uh, what we got to do now is, again, go back to the beginning and press record and let it record uh, to 11 and 12 by replacing it. And then once I've done that, I'm going to export the stereo as our second sample. And then we're going to go through the same procedure again so we compress it again. So I'll be back shortly. So to save you time, I've already done in the background, played it with the compression on and recorded an 11 and 12. And then I export the mix, uh, stereo mix, and copy it onto my laptop. So let's do this procedure again. So now I'm going to go again to my menu and I'm going to go into multi-track recorder, track edit, normalize again. Uh, 0 0.3 dB, um, the main one, so the main, so what I've recorded, uh, I'm just going to click yes, so that now that we compressed a little bit using the compressor, some of the peaks would have sort of um, leveled up, and we're going to try the same thing again, and this time we're going to see if we can have more limiting effect to compress it even further down. So exit, and now I'm going to track swap 11 and 12 into 9 to 10. Yes, and we can exit that now. So let's listen to 9 and 10 without any compression. With 0 dB here and 0 dB on the main, we can see it's getting pretty loud. So let's bring the limiter in. If the shoe don't fit, and as you can see, what we want is the LED the to gently every now and then sort of um, come on, just capturing those peaks. We can EQ now as well. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty good now. Again, without boring you uh, listening to it again, I'm just going to press the record button and record all the changes onto 11 and 12. Again, do a normalize and then export to the stereo. So on my laptop, there'll be three versions of the mix for us to compare. So let's go to my laptop once I've finished that. And here we are on my laptop. I've got the three mix files that I've moved them from the SD card using the storage mode of the Tascam Model 12. And uh, I just put them in my DAW. That's the first one. That's the first mix with no compression. That's our original mix. And the second track is the one that we did some compression sort of like a bus compression. And the third one is the one we try to sort of have um, the high ratio, sort of like a limiter type compression. And that's what we can see from the actual uh, waveforms as well, that it does get louder. But how loud? Well, let's find out. Um, like you, I don't know. I just dragged them in and, and hopefully we'll be able to see the loudness level. I'm just going to select the loudest part of the song to give us some idea of what loudness would it would be. And I've got Yulene loudness meter. Here we are, added. So let's play and let's view together, see how loud our original mix was. Hey, about minus 27 
minus 28 dBL UFS. Not too loud. <laughs> and we have a true peak of minus 7.7 .7 dB. Okay, so let's move on to the second one. This is the one with that actually had a bit of compression. Uh, low ratio compression, but compression still. Let's find out. Reset. So cut that noose. Bust out and shake some spirit loose. It's been so wrong, so long. Okay, minus 21 D DBL UFS integrated. and true peak of minus 2.8 dB. Okay, so let's find out the third one. See if our limiting and second time round did have any effect on getting louder and more closer to, I guess, for commercial release. So Definitely minus uh, 0 0.3 dB. And minus 18 dB LUFS. It is lower than the minus 14 LUFS that we'd normally get, but that's what it is because you don't have a compressor or a limiter, especially, that you can push your levels into so that it takes care of all of those peaks. Unfortunately, that's not available. And I'm hoping that Tascam will put at least a compressor or a limiter, high ratio uh, compressor, on the main bus that you can turn it on and off and at least allow you to set a ceiling like in Normalize and be able to uh, have attack and release settings as well, because that's all you're going to need. Well, let me know what you think. Is it really worth doing mastering on Tascam Model 12 in standalone mode? My opinion is, unless you have a limiter that you can adjust settings to and push your signal into it to get a little bit louder signal, it's not going to work. You're really going to need to master it on to a PC. So best option at the moment is to mix your song, give a lot of headroom, like the original one that I had, the mix, and then bring into a laptop or a PC and do the mastering there to get much, much better result and more balanced mix because you can use EQ, compression, as well as limiting, saturation, and clipping to bring your levels up. Well, that's it for today's video. If you have experience and you do master your songs on your Tascam Model 12 in standalone mode, let me know in the comment section how you go about doing it. Um, of course, you can use external hardware limiters that you can feed out to the sub outputs and back into the input of 9 and 10 or 7 and 8 and then record it that way. Of course, that might work and bring out your loudness level up to the commercial standards, at least to minus 14, minus 13 dB LUFS or even uh, louder. It's up to you depending on the genre of the music. Let me know in the comment section how do you go about doing it. If this video was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. I'll catch you in the next one.